Hi, I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday school lesson for February the 14th, 2021 is Call to Support. And we have three different passages of scripture for this lesson today. It is taken from the gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter, the first through the third verse, and the gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter, verse 40, and the gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter, verses 10 through 18. And we're still in this quarterly theme of call in the New Testament, and our unit of study that we're in now is the call of women. And dealing with this call to support. Now, all through the scripture that, that we saw in Jesus's ministry, we saw that there were certain women that ministered to him. As we talked about a few weeks ago, when, when, his, when Peter's mother-in-law was sick and had a, a headache and just couldn't get rid of it, and Jesus healed her and she ministered to them. In other words, she fed them, she took care of them. And all through the ministry, there were some that would, would minister to him in different ways and, and, and minister to he and the disciples. And, and they were supporting. They were so a, a supporting cast in this. And to support means to bear or hold up. Well, what, what is to bear or hold up? It means to maintain even by supplying those things that are necessary for existence or in this case, to the existence of the ministry, keeping the ministry flowing as, as, as they supplied the things that were needed, as they were there for, for, for support there. To, and some of them had substance, and that's that's going to be clear here in the scripture as, as we're going to see this, and came from a lot of different walks of life, a lot of different areas, uh, and, and ministered to the Lord in a special way. But in the seventh chapter of the, the gospel according to St. Saint, Saint Luke, Jesus had, just before this chapter starts, this eighth chapter, that chapter started, Jesus had just uh, been anointed by a woman bearing an alabaster box that it had much sin on her, according to the scripture, and, and Jesus had, had forgiven her sin. As she cried there as she wiped his feet and, and with her hair and, 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 and dried them with, with her hair and, and the tears flowing down, the, the box broken and the ointment going over him, all of these things happening and the guys around saying that he doesn't know this woman that's touching him, Simon, whose house he's at, not Simon Peter, but another Simon, uh, one of the, uh, I think one of the Pharisees, and one, uh, he doesn't know what type of woman is touching him. In that particular passage of scripture, the, the, the Lord gave, gave, said, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he said, say on, Lord. And he, he said, gave two scenarios of two people that owed, uh, uh, and one owed 50,000 and one owed 500,000, something like that is the example. And he said, who would be more loving to the person who would appreciate it more, and G and the and the guy said the one that was forgiven the most. So Jesus was given the example of a person that had been forgiven much, or a person that ex understands how far they were away from the Lord. Because if we look at it in reality, we are all in that position where we were headed to a devil's hell or to hell with the devil before we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We were all in the same boat, but some of us hadn't got the picture yet. We hadn't realized it yet that we were all sinners and headed to, to hell, still sinners, but saved by the grace of God. John said there in the, in in First John that if we say we have no sin, we, we deceive ourselves, that uh, we lie, and the truth is not in us. So we, we, we understand that even now we may have some hiccups, but we, we do understand that we are saved by grace. And one day this corruptible will put on incorruption. We'll have to worry about the, 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 even the presence of sin. We're, we're delivered from, from the, the penalty and, 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 and 
all, all of those things, but we uh, one day we won't even have to worry about even the presence of sin. So that woman, she had she had she had wiped Jesus Jesus' feet, and Jesus had had told her the last thing he said in the seventh chapter that was that thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. He told that woman. They were kind of confused and not understanding of, of the fact that Jesus told her that she was forgiven. But then this chapter starts right away. This eight chapter starts right away after that. It says, and, and, and it came to pass afterward. After what? After the seventh chapter. After the things that Jesus had said to the woman that had the alabaster box. After he had told her that faith has saved thee, go in peace. Your faith. Not, not anything else. Your faith in the person of Jesus Christ, not in you coming and acting, not because of your tears, not because of your alabaster box, not because of all of these things. Those were only expression of your faith, only expressions of your love for him and your care and concern, but they weren't the things that got you to the salvation. The salvation comes to us by faith. Faith is that which, 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 which gets us to the place where we receive the grace. And until we get to the point where we, we get to where we jump off and the faith is not is, is the thing that gets us to where we are saved, we have to understand that. We have to grasp the fact that we trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We ask him to save us and he saves us by his grace. Grace is the pallet that we land on, the, 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 the cushion that we land on, but faith is that which carried us to that. And because of our faith in Jesus Christ, the, the blow of hell and death will not be given to us. We have the pallet and the, and the, the, the mattress of grace. We have something wonderful to land on, and it's the grace of God, that unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor. So after those things that had happened in the seventh chapter, and Jesus had told her her faith had, had, had saved thee, go in peace, that he went through every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Now, after he left there, he had steps to make. He had more preaching and teaching to do. So he left there and he went through every city, or the ones that, that he could get to, every city and village. He, he was sharing, he was sharing a, a special message, a message that hadn't been given this way before. John had given a message about one coming whose shoes he was not worthy to, to unlatch, but he couldn't give the whole message. But Jesus was the one that could give the message because it would be his blood that he would take into the Holy of Holies and put it on the mercy seat, on, on, the, on that Ark of the Covenant, on that lid on the top of the Ark of the Covenant, sprinkle his own blood on the mercy seat for us to, to forgive us of our sins. He said he went to all of these villages giving the good news of the gospel. That's what he was given when he was when it says he was preaching. He had a specific message that he was preaching. He had he told them how how uh, many times how he was going to die and and be and, and be risen again. He no one really grasped that at that point, but but he was telling them the good news is that he came and he was going to die for their sins. They were going to be taken care of fully and and nothing else to be paid. As a matter of fact, when he died, as he died on the cross, he did say it is finished. If it was something else, somebody else that still needed salvation, Jesus would have stayed until that person's sin Dead had been taken care of, but he took care of all of them there at Calvary's cross. He's not even coming back to take care of the ones you might do tomorrow because they were nailed to the cross too if you are a believer or if you will be a believer. And showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, he did perform certain miracles. He did do different things. He gave sight to the blind. He even raised the dead. He did certain things. And, and this it, were the examples of the kingdom of God. And then there's a colon said, and the 12 were with him. 
the 12 were the, were the disciples that were with him that would be called apostles. One of them, John said, was a devil. And we know that that was Judas, Judas Iscariot. So Jesus came giving the gospel message, telling them about the things that were going to happen, that, 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 that were going to transpire. As he was getting close to his life, he knew that these things must come to be. But look at this. This is where we're trying to get to. Verse 2 said, certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, and then a comma, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Now, that wasn't Mary in, this, in the seventh chapter there, but this is Mary Magdalene. It doesn't tell us when this particular thing happened when he cast out these seven devils, but they, it did happen. And she was just as the other woman in the seventh chapter because she had been give, forgiven for so much. And she understood that she did have trust and faith in the Lord and she felt a special connection to him. And she did show her gratitude by in the substance that she would share, in, in the supporting cast that she she would give not only her but other women would too they would bear bear and hold up they would maintain by supplying the necessary things for the existence of Jesus's ministry as he and the men walked around we know that Jesus didn't have to have this but isn't it wonderful that they wanted to give this isn't it wonderful that they wanted to share and they were a part of the ministry of Jesus Christ? And then the third verse of this eight chapter says, and Joanna, the wife of, of Cusa, Herod's steward, this, this man worked in, the, in, in for Herod, actual Herod himself, but his wife it was there and, and Susanna and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. That is the plain teaching of this there at the end of the third verse. It says that they gave, they were to supplying those things that were needful, those things that helped the ministry exist, that continued, the, the, that bared and, and supported the ministry, that, that held up the ministry. They were there and doing this and Jesus didn't chastise them and say, no, no, you go home. We got this. They, they, they were there. They walked with them and they were a part of the ministry and and, they, and it was helping them with their substance. And Joanna, the, the wife of, of Cusa, she probably had substance because her husband worked in, in the, in the, uh, for Herod there in the palace. So he was able to, uh, he was a steward and he, he probably had pretty good substance coming in. And others, they ministered to him. They had substance and they shared it. Then we go to go backwards in, in, the, in our book, in the Bible, to the to Mark, the gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter. And we're here at the cross now. We're here as all of these things are happening. And, and, and it was at the cross, the hymnologist said, where we first saw the light and the burdens of our heart rolled away. I, I have to admit that it was at the cross. There were, were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the less, or James the younger, some would say, and of Joseph and Salome. Now, we, we look at this, this. This was the women that were there at the cross. They were still ministering. At, at this time, they could only minister their care and concern and their tears and their love for the Lord. And that was poured out there at the cross. They, they were showing how they were linked to the Lord, how much they cared about him. There were also women looking on. They were afar off. They, all of them wasn't right there. Now, we do know that Mary, the mother of Jesus, the, the earthly mother of Jesus, and, and, and John was standing there close to the cross because Jesus would talk to Mary and John and let them know that you are now responsible for each other. And there were also women looking on, uh, looking afar, uh, far off. And then there's a colon which says, let me explain, among who was Mary Magdalene. Here we go with Mary Magdalene again, this woman in which seven devils were cast out of her, but now she is true to the Lord. Now she loves the Lord. Now she has genuine concern for the Lord, genuine concern even for the well-being. This is the Lord. She didn't recognize him at this time as Savior because 
He hadn't been, hadn't already been in the grave and, and, and had ascended to the Father, but this was the thing that was happening here at verse 40. Jesus was dying there on the cross. Mary Magdalene was able to watch this thing happen. And also Mary, the mother of James, the less. James, the, 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 the less. Uh, Mary, the, the, the wife probably of, of Alphaeus. And this, this would, would link James, this James. This is not the James that, that would be the brother of, of John, who would be the first martyr. This would be James. They call him the less because... That, that James was pretty big because he was a part of that, that, that inner circle of Jesus, that the, 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 the brother of John. So now this is James, the son of Alphaeus. Now, this guy came from a godly family because look at his mother. Look where she's at. Mary, the mother of James, the less. She was there at the cross also. She was one of the ones that was standing afar off and, and looking at the things that were happening. It was breaking her heart also as God was dying there on the cross, as he was giving his life to save men from their sin. And nobody really understood at this time, even though Jesus had said it many times that he would he had to do this and in three days he would rise again. So now Mary, the mother of James the less and, and of Joseph, and, uh, Joseph is, is what we'll find that name to be if we looked it up in the, in the English language. So then, and, and Salome. Salome was, was probably the wife of Zebedee. Zebedee, the net mender that, that had two sons that were fishermen also, James and John, the ones we had just talked about. And and now the Salome mother of, of James and John, and, and she's there at the cross too. So these mothers, they supported the ministry that the sons had linked themselves to. So they were at the cross too. They were ministering. They were sharing their substance. Now at this time, the substance that they're sharing is their tears and their genuine concern. And, and they were there at the cross. And then our lesson goes to that, that chapter that sometimes breaks our heart, but we see the Lord rising that day. And, and because it comes right after the chapter that breaks our heart where the Lord died in the, in the 19th chapter of the gospel according to St. John. But look at this, this 10th chapter of the gospel, I mean this 20th chapter of the gospel according to St. John. The, the 10th verse says, then the disciples went away again unto their home. Remember in the first verses of this, this, this 20th chapter, Mary had got to the tomb. Now we know that different gospel uh, writers wrote different things in their in their message trying to portray a different type of message but at this point the the disciples it, she went and told and two of the disciples ran to the tomb and that was was Peter and the one whom Jesus loved we know who that is that is John ran to the tomb and 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 the one that was younger looked in he when he got there he looked in but when Pete got there he ran on into the tomb and they saw the things that would happen that, how the, the napkin that had been over Jesus' face was folded and, and they saw the things that, that where his, his feet and his head had laid. And then the, the disciples, they went away again is what this 10th verse says. They looked in, didn't see him, they went away again. But obviously, Mary Magdalene decided to hang out. So Peter and John are gone and they're moseying back to where they had been held up at. But Mary stood, verse 11 of the 20th chapter, Says, who stood without the sepulcher, weeping. She stood outside of the tomb while the sepulcher is, as it's mentioned here in the King James Version, weeping, crying, the tears rolling down because she still, just as they didn't, st didn't understand the things that Jesus had said that, uh, about how he would rise again. But those that seek him early, those that hang out around the things of the Lord, they will get a message from the Lord. And he, it would be a wonderful message. See, so Mary stood without the sepulcher weeping. And as she went, as, as she wept, as the tears were flowing, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. She stooped down and looked in while she was, now the fellas had already been in. They didn't see the angels, but she stooped down 
and she gets to see the angels because her heart is in a different area. They're, they're thinking it logically. And logically, they couldn't see any way that, that things could be happening other than what had happened. Somebody came and stole his body. They were thinking logically. She was thinking that emotionally. And she gets to see because the heart is, is, is broken. That's a contrite heart. And, and she stoops down and looks in to the sepulcher. And look what she sees. They didn't see it. They had just left. Peter and John had just left the scene. I don't think there was anything wrong with their sight. John was younger than anybody. And seeing two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain, had lain, not still laying there, but they, these two angels were there. They were in white, shining. The splendor was all, probably almost too much for her to look upon, but one was sitting where his head had been laid and the other was sitting where his feet had been laid. And remember when the when, when Peter and John got, got there, they saw the napkin had been neatly folded up that was over his face there at the burial because Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus had prepared the body and, and put many ointments into the body and had, had prepared the body for or bombed the body for the burial. So now, even after they had put these things on, all of those things were laid there at, at in the tomb. There in the tomb where we call now the mercy seat. That's where the, bl the blood was just rolling down. But now all they see is a neatly folded napkin and she sees angels. Remember, when, we, when, when, when the priest got into the Holy of Holies, he would see angels too. Now, those angels would be the angels that they put there, the cherubims that, that, would, be have, that would have their wings stretched out over the, 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 the mercy seat there at under the underneath uh, above the ark of the covenant rather and 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 now these angels are standing there because the body is not there anymore but it's still the mercy seat it was it was the, the, what jesus did at the cross he presented himself to be the mercy seat where the body had lain and then verse 13 says and they said unto her woman why weepest thou she said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Now, notice that she didn't say taken away my Savior, Lord and Savior. She only said they had taken away my Lord because she didn't know that at this point, even though Jesus had been teaching that, that had been part of the good news that he was teaching, preaching and, and teaching the good news, the gospel message. Even though he had been teaching that, Everybody didn't, nobody really understood that uh, uh, to the point where they had total faith in it at that time. But Jesus was going to strengthen that in a herd. So he, he, they said here, they, she said to them, uh, uh, they said to her, why are you weeping? They knew why she was weeping. But now they're, they're doing a faith building thing. This is something to help her. In, in, in the rest of her life, it says, because they had taken away my Lord and I know not where they had laid him. And verse 14 says, and when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Now notice that she didn't get caught up in the fact that there were angels there in front of her sitting there at where Jesus body had laid. She didn't get caught up in the fact that say, wow, angels from, from, from the Lord, angels from heaven. Those things didn't cloud her mind at this time. They didn't even have to say, peace, be, be still. They, don't worry about it. That, that, that's, well, I didn't come to harm you or anything else. They didn't have to say these things. She was caught up in, in, in the fact that the Lord was out of her presence and she loved him with a very real love. And when she had thus said, she turned her back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. She turned her back. Now she sees someone behind her. She's there now by herself and everybody else is gone. And, and now she saw two angels and now someone standing behind her. It doesn't say that she jumped or scared was, was scared about this and, and, and this, it didn't confuse her at all. Well, we do know that she thought it was the gardener because it's going to tell us that in, in the next verse. G verse 15 says, Jesus said unto her, woman, why 
weepest thou? It's the same question that the angels had asked. Whom seeketh thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou art borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. If you didn't want his body to be here in Joseph's new tomb, just tell me where you put him, and I'll take him somewhere else and find somewhere else to store his body. You now she's she's looking. She's not looking for a risen savior. She's looking for a body of a master of, of the Lord that she had been walking with. One of one still herself, one of the disciples, really, and had been walking with with him herself. So she said she's weeping. And Jesus asked her the question that the angels had asked. He knew why she was weeping also, just like the angels do. And then asked her, who is she seeking? And she was. She let him know that she was seeking the Lord. If you have taken away, taken him away, then tell me where he is. Just, just let me know where you've laid him. Verse 16 says, and Jesus said unto her, Mary, or in the Greek, in the Hebrew, Miriam. He said, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, Rabbi, which is to say master. She knew that this was the Lord at this time. Now this was a, a big message that, that came in the form of our last week's lesson. She had a testimony now. Now this is something that she had the truth and the facts about, and she could share them. Even if Jesus hadn't said share them, she knew it for herself. She would have been able to share them, but Jesus was very specific in who needed to receive this first because they had been there, but they turned around thinking a different type of way, and she wanted, he wanted her to take this to them and hand them. Hand it to them, this testimony that you have. You share it with them. I'm going to send you on a commission as, 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 as my missionary. Take them this message. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And Jesus said unto her, touch me not, which means don't detain me. Don't hold me. That's what the touch me not there means. That's, that doesn't mean don't reach out and, and touch me in a way. He means don't detain me. I've got some work to do. I still have to ascend to the Father. You can't keep me here. I can't stay here. This is not. This is a place that I have to leave from. And and sometimes we get caught up in this life so much to the fact that we don't understand. That's why we accumulate so much stuff in this life. And I, I I'm reminded of of, of, a, of a woman that was visiting the priest one day, and when she got to the priest's little 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 place that he was living. She walked into this place after she had knocked on the door because she was traveling from afar and had driven up and, and came in and she saw a little table with a lamp on it with one little chair pushed up under the table and, and saw a little bitty kitchen and where, where he, he could cook a little food and, and saw off to the side a little restroom and and, and and just another little sitting place right there. And she asked him, where is your stuff? And he asked her, where, where is your stuff? She said, I've come from a long ways and, and I get here and I think that you, you have more than this. Is this all you have? Where's your stuff? And he says, where's your stuff again? And she says, it's, it's at home. I'm just traveling. I'm just journeying through. He says, so am I. I'm just journeying through it. Sometimes we get caught up in the moment and we don't understand that we're just pilgrim traveling through a barren land and we're not here to stay. We got to leave this place. He said, touch me not for I'm not yet ascended to my father. I hadn't gone to my father yet, but go to my brethren. This was the first time Jesus had recognized them as brother, and he had told them that they were were, were his friends when when he was getting there to the, to his to the, to the end. But now he says that they are my brethren, and then he went went on to solidify the fact that he had, it, he was calling them brother by saying, "I say unto and say unto them, this is what I want you to tell these guys when you get to them, hidden out, find them and tell them this, I send to my father." He didn't say our father. He said, I send to my father because he has a special relationship. He being the eternal son and equal with God. So he says, my father and to your father. Now you are a father because you are engrafted in. You are in, adopted into the beloved because of your belief in me, because you trust me as your savior and because I call you 
brethren. Now you are linked to the father. So, and your father and to my God, remember the first time he called God, my God was when he was hanging there on the cross just a few days before this, just three days before this, when he was dying and man's sin came upon him and he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Prior to that, every time he called on his father, he called him my father. But now he, he says to my God and also to your God. And then verse 18 says, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples. She told, she testified to the disciples. She wasn't telling what someone else may have told her uh, other, other than Jesus himself. She's telling what the Lord himself had told her. She got to witness and see him herself, the risen Savior. She knew the risen Savior. Now she could call him Savior because the Lord had, had risen. But she said she came to them and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. He had spoken now. Shortly after this, the next verse, matter of fact, Jesus would come to them and, and appear before them himself. But here she gives them what the Lord told her to say. And she was even this person that was even being a supporting cast, even in this, supporting the ministry, whatever needs to be done. If I need to go out and give these fellows a message and let them know the Lord said this, I got, I got them there too. I'll bear, I'll hold up, I'll supply. I'll maintain, I'll help, help keep things rolling in the ministry of the Lord. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we do pray that you will call all of us and help us to understand that we should all be supporting the, the ministry just as these women did. Father, we do thank you so much for all that you have done for us. We do pray that you will search our hearts, forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining the Sunday School Lesson Review. Hope to see you next week. God bless you all.